Hi, this is Steve with OS Nexus, and I've got a fun video for you today. We're going to go through the process of setting up a scale up Quantastore configuration on the Seagate 5U84 Bay AP unit. The 5U84 is a dual node server with 84 drive bays in it that can be used for a mix of flash and platter. And we're going to go through all the steps required to get the entire system set up from scratch. The first step in getting things set up is typically done for you, which is installing the Quantastore operating system onto the Seagate AP canisters or blades as they're often referred to. That installation process can be done by getting the ISO media from the OS Nexus website and putting it into the back of the server. Uh, with a USB stick, booting it up. You gotta mash the inner key a few times, but it's gonna be done with the install in a few minutes. Once that's done, the unit's gonna get an IP address from your DHCP server, and you'll be able to use that IP that it gathers to go directly into the web UI to do the rest of the setup. The next step is to log into the UI on both of the two blades that are in the 5U84, and to combine those two together to create a grid. So you go to the first box, click the button to create a grid, and then click the OK and then add the second system to the grid and I'll show you how to do that. First thing after creating the grid, you want to change the network interfaces so that they have static IPs applied to them. The DHCP gathered IP addresses that the systems will get for the initial boot, that's fine for uh, getting access to the UI initially, but you really need static IPs applied to all the ports. After that, I'm gonna show you how to basically format all the drives to make sure that they're quick formatted, that any partitions that might've been on them from a prior configuration or anything that's on that's cleared off. And then we'll go through creating the pool, adding some SSDs to the pool for metadata offload. To that's gonna speed up the performance of the pool. And then we're gonna turn on HA, high availability, so that the pool will continue to run even if one of the two server blades is turned off or has a hardware problem. Without further ado, let's dive in. So to log into the Quantistor UI for the first time, uh, you'll put in admin and the password of just password. And press OK or login to log in. And the first time that you log in, it's gonna ask you to change the password on the system. For right now, I'm just gonna leave it with the default password, so I'm gonna hit cancel and leave it with, with that. But you definitely want to change the password as one of the first things that you go and do. I've already formed the grid, but the grid is very easy to form. You click this button, uh, it's saying we've already formed the grid, but you simply put in a name for it and click OK, and that will create the grid. And then you add the second system to the grid by clicking Add System. Now, as you deploy more Quantastore systems across multiple 5U84s or multiple sites with different equipment, you can just click Add System to keep growing the grid, and the grid can expand within the same site, and it can expand to globally to include uh, multiple sites so that you can still continue to manage all of your storage through a single pane of glass. The UI that I've logged into here uh, is accessible on all of the Quantastore systems simultaneously. So we've got a Quantastore 1 and a Quantastore 2 here. If I look at all the systems in the grid, we could log into it at this 192.168.17.11 or into 21. And that's one of the cool things about the grid technology is that you get access to the web interface on all the systems simultaneously. There's no extra software to install. Uh, now that we're logged in, we've got a grid formed. Uh, we've got some IP, some static IPs applied to uh, these two systems. We're going to take a look at the media and get it prepped so that we can start using it to create a storage pool. And one of the first things that you want to do is just make sure that all of your devices show up with this dm uuid mpath That tells us that the multipathing configuration and, and management is turned on, and we want to check that on both systems. And I can see that both Quantastore 1 and Quantastore 2, all the devices are showing up with mpath The other thing I'm looking for here is for any devices that have the word part one in it. Do you see this here? This part one tells us that that drive's got a partition on it. It's got some leftover file system information on it. We wanna be sure to scrub that off the drive before we start to use uh, this media to go create a, a storage pool. So we're gonna start by clicking on the format button under this uh, physical disk uh, section in the toolbar. And we're just gonna select all the media and we're going to format it all. So we've got a configuration here with a whole bunch of 16 terabyte drives, some 800 gigabyte SSDs, and then this partition we're going to get rid of, and it'll get rid of it just by formatting it. And you can do like a DOD shred, uh, like a long format. Uh, if you just use the default here, it's just going to do a quick format. 
note that the system will not let you format drives that are in use by another pool or being used by the boot media. So we can just do a group select all and then just click OK. And that's going to go format all the drives for us. And here you can see the progress of the task of it formatting the drives. You can see they're in the busy state while it's going to get uh, that all formatted. And this will just take a minute for the format to complete. I'm just going to pause here for a second. All right, now the formatting has been done and we want to do a scan for disks here to make sure that all the information has been updated and that anything like this leftover partition gets cleared out. So we're telling the system, go scan the drives, make sure that you have all the ac latest accurate information now that they've all been formatted. And now you can see that that partition is now gone. All of the multi-path devices are looking nice and clean here. I'm also going to tell it to go rescan for disks on the second box, make sure it's got an, its accurate state because both boxes are connected to the media at the same time. So the 5U84 is two servers plus an 84 JBOD all in a single 5U unit. One more thing that we want to check is we're going to go back to the storage systems tab. And we're going to make sure that a couple of these uh, key features are enabled for our HA scale up configs. One of them is the multipath config mode. We want it to automatically configure multipathing for any new media that's connected to the system. And we want to make sure that the IO fencing system is turned on. If we tried to go create a pool and make it highly available without the IO fencing capabilities on, it would actually give us an error. But it's good to just check this up front and make sure that that looks good. So, and it does, those are both enabled. I'm going to go look at that on the other box. So let's look at Quantistor 2. It's also enabled on there. So we're all set to go. Now we can go to the pool section and we can make our storage pool. So we do that either by right clicking to get to the pop-up menu. You can do that in this middle section or from the, uh, the section bar, or you can go up here and click on create in the toolbar. And now we're gonna go create our pool. We'll call it storage pool one. And we're going to use double parity RAID. There's a lot of different RAID choices. Besides single, double, and triple parity, we also have distributed RAID options. For this, we're going to do a simple double parity configuration. And this set size selector over here on the right lets us choose how many disks per, per stripe do we want. And now this 84 bay system will use something like 70 drives, and we'll do those each in stripes of 10 drives each. So what I can do here is I can hit the plus button here and this will help us by selecting 10 drives at a time for us and that way we can save a lot of time and you'll see that the number selected is now 40. I can click on that a couple more times and get this up to 70 <clears throat> and you'll see that it's all it's picking all the same drives of the same type. Uh, so this is a really nice way to just make it easy to select a bunch of drives. So now that we've got 70 drives selected, if we wanted to make this an encrypted pool, now would be the time to go do that. You'd click software encryption to enable software encryption. Hardware encryption is available if you do an all flash configuration using media that is Opal 2 compliant. Uh, in this case, we're using just standard hard drive. So if we want to make this encrypted, we would just ch check this box to make it encrypted. Quantastore also integrates with KMIP, so if you wanted to make the keys externally managed, there's some extra steps that you do under the security tab to add your KMIP server first, but then you can externally manage the keys. Under advanced settings, there's some different IO profiles and things that you can, that you can apply. But we're just going to go with all the defaults and go here and click OK to get our pool created. You can see the task running in the taskbar down here to create the storage pool. And after about um, a few seconds, we're gonna see the pool appear here. Okay, so we've created our encrypted storage pool. And just by clicking on the pool, we can see all of the devices that we've selected in the 84 base. Everything with a dotted line around it is a, is a device that's part of the Quantastore storage pool. You can see here, we've got all 70 drives. If I expand one of these RAID stripes, you can see all the drives that are in there. And now I'm gonna go add some SSDs to this because it's really important to add three SSDs uh, for metadata offload. So we're gonna go take three SSDs. We could even do this in, uh, since we have so many SSDs available, we take six, but it's gonna triple mirror all of these for us. In fact, I'm in the wrong tab. We wanna go to metadata offload, then we'll choose six of these drives. Uh, and that's gonna give us uh, two stripe or two two sets of three drives doing triple triple mirror. So uh, we're going to have all this space to offload the metadata of the file system and offload all the small files. So as 
users are writing small files, that's going to automatically go into Flash. So all those 4K, 16K files will be in Flash. All the large files are going to go to Platter. So you get the best of both worlds by having great performance for small files and great performance for large files just by adding some SSDs. The SSDs benefit the configuration in a myriad of other ways as well with faster scrubs, faster rebuilds. So in any time that you're doing a new deployment, be sure to have three SSDs that you can add at minimum to any platter-based pool. If you're doing an all-flash configuration, you don't need to add any metadata offload disks. So now that we've got our six disks, our six SSDs rather, selected here, we're going to click OK and it's going to go add that into the pool for us. So we're going to see that show up here as two mirror sets and each one will have three SSDs in them. So you can see the progress of that configuration happening right there at the bottom. Okay, now you can see the two mirror sets that are used for our met metadata offload. You'll see the word special on there. That's the metadata offload groups are noted as special VDEVs uh, as, as, <clears throat> as the term goes. And now that we've got those in there, we've, we're done creating the pool and we could even start provisioning storage for users. But before we do that, we want to make this pool highly available. We want it such that if the system that the pool is currently running on is turned off, that it will automatically fail over to another system. And right now the pool is running on Quantastore 1. We can see that right here. How do we get this uh, pool set up with high availability? We go to the high availability VIP management tab and we're going to make what we call a site cluster. And this is a heartbeat mechanism that's going to allow us to go and create virtual interfaces that we attach to the pool. I'm going to select both systems, make sure that these are IPs that are on the same network. Oftentimes we'll use the management IPs for the heartbeat mechanism, uh, but you can use any, any network uh, that you've got configured on the systems for the heartbeat mechanism. So now that we've selected the two systems, we're just going to click OK and it's going to go set up that heartbeat uh, mechanism for us. It takes a minute for that to uh, get configured, but you can see it's uh, going through and setting it up for us right now. It takes about a minute for that configuration work to complete. But now that we've got that done, we can now make the pool highly available. So we're going to right click on the pool and we're going to say create high availability group. And uh, really there's nothing that we need to do here. It's just the defaults are all correct. Uh, it's saying, yes, I want to make pool one highly available. This export timeout seconds is basically the amount of maximum amount of time it'll allow to export the pool. Usually failover is going to take 20 seconds. So this is set with very conservative amount of time. Under the connectivity section, you can, you can do various adjustments to the failover uh, system. Or if you want to have it do client side ping checks to do preemptive failovers in different scenarios. For the most part, you'll just want to leave that at the defaults. And uh, we're just going to click OK. Very simple to go get the HA enabled. Now the last step that we need to do is now that we have the site cluster, we've got the HA group on the pool, we need to give it a virtual interface that can move uh, with the pool. And so I'm going to do that just by right clicking on the HA group, choosing add cluster VIF. And now we're going to go and tell it what type of VIF we're going to go create. And yes, we want to create a scale up HA based virtual interface. And we want to do that for this HA group that we have selected. And now we're going to go to the virtual interface tab and give it an IP address. We're going to give it IP address 192.168.17.35. We can choose which network interface we want to attach that to. We're going to put this on ENO1. And and then we're done. We're just going to click OK and it's going to go and attach that virtual interface to the pool. So now you can see the virtual interface has been attached to the pool. The HA group is going to become online. You can see the down arrow on the on the HA group. It's a little bit small, but you're going to see that transition to becoming active. And at that, that point, the pool is now fully highly available. You can see it doing that work down here in these tasks. So got to give it a minute for it to complete. All right, now the pool's fully configured. And so what we like to do, the uh, first thing after we go and get an HA configuration set up is to test failover. So the way that you can do the failover test is just right click on the HA group, click execute HA failover, and then click OK. And it's going to transition the pool from the current system that it's on, Quantastore 1, and it's going to fail it over to Quantastore 2. And now you can see the HA failover is complete. You can see now that it's on Quantastore 2. 
and everything's good to go. That's the main things that I wanted to cover in the video today. Next steps is to start provisioning storage for users. You can provision file storage here just by clicking create, giving it a name, choosing the pool that we just created and click OK. That's all there is to creating file storage. There's a bunch of advanced options on those pages as well. Similarly for block storage, you can just right click, say create storage volume, or again use the toolbar at the top and put in a name, put in a capacity, click OK. That'll create a block device that you can access over iSCSI. With the block devices, you also have to assign those block devices to a host. So I can go and assign that block device to this host so that it can access it through this IQN. And I'm gonna do that just by right clicking on the host and choosing assign volumes that brought up this dialogue. And now I can just click okay to assign the volume. That's really all there is to going and setting up file and block storage with a highly available configuration using the Seagate 5U84. As I was mentioning earlier, that hardware integration is there so you can see where all the drives are at in the 5U84. We can click on individual uh, individual RAID groups and see exactly which drives make up this particular RAID group. And if there's any problems with any of the drives, Quantistore automatically will highlight that drive in yellow or red, depending on uh, what, what state the drive is in, and it will activate the LED beacon and send a call home alert. So besides the steps that we did here today, the last final things I recommend everybody do on new, new deployments is go to the upgrade manager section and select both systems and then run an upgrade to make sure all the boxes are up to date. You can run these upgrades while the system is running. Uh, when it does the UI upgrade, you will have to log out and log back in, um, but you can do upgrades while you've got uh, production workloads uh, running. It won't interrupt your iSCSI or file storage access. Um, the other thing to do that's really important is setting up the call home alerting. So you can put in your email information for your email SNM, SNMTP server so that you can have it send emails uh, to your IT team in case there's any maintenance that's, that's required. The neat thing about the alert manager is you only have to set this up once for the whole grid. So as you add more systems into your Quantastore environment, you don't have to come back and revisit this. We also have some really great IT service management modules so that you can go and monitor the health of your quantum store systems and have the alerts be sent to your uh, ServiceNow LightStep or to Splunk On Call or PagerDuty, whatever uh, the, the, the system that you might be using for your cloud-based IT service management. We have documentation on our website <clears throat> on how to go and configure that. And one other thing to note, in the upper right-hand corner of all the dialogues throughout UI, throughout Quantastore is this little question mark button that will take you over to our documentation site so you can get some more assistance with the UI. And one other thing I wanted to note is our getting started guide. So all the steps that we went through today are in the getting started guide and it's built right into the product. So what we did at the beginning there was we went and created a grid. Um, this goes over how to configure the alerting. Uh, we didn't get into how to set up Active Directory, but that's just another one of the other dialogues. And then what we focused on today was setting up a scale-up storage pool, and that involved setting up the site cluster under this high availability VIF management tab. Uh, we, you can add a second cluster ring, that's optional. We created the pool, created an HA group, and then made the pool uh, HA group active by attaching a VIF to it. So we really went through these first five steps and then provision some file storage and provision some block storage. But these workflows, these initial configuration steps, uh, all you have to remember is click this getting started button in the upper right hand corner and that'll really get you, get you on, on your way. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, contact us at info at osnexus.com. Thank you.